Hello friends, welcome to the studio. We're gonna go outside for our art project. You want to pick a nice day to be outside. Sunny and bright, but not too hot and calm. So don't pick a day that would be better for flying kites. This project is inspired by the work of an artist who lives in England which is a country on an island on the east of the Atlantic Ocean. And her name is Lucy Auger, and she lives outside a big city surrounded by farms and fields. She loves nature and she loves making art about nature. Her studio is right in the middle of it. She can leave her table and walk outside and immediately be surrounded by flowers and trees and birds and sheep and cows. It's a wonderful life that she has and she makes beautiful artworks using the things that she finds and that's what we're going to do as well. You can see some examples here and I'm going to show you how I made each one. For this project, you want to gather up your drawing tools and something to carry them all in, something sturdy. I actually have a big bucket from the hardware store. And the neat thing about the bucket is when the lid is on, it's strong enough for me to use as a seat. You're also going to want to have some drawing boards, something to support your paper. This is called Coroplast. It's used to make yard signs and you can get it at the hardware store. And what you can do ahead of time is take your papers and either tape them down with some removable tape, like this blue tape, or you can use binder clips to hold your papers. The nice thing about the removable tape is you can put lots of papers on your board wherever you want them. If you're going to use the binder clips, they will only work when you put your papers on the edges of your board. And this board is just a mailing box that I flattened down. And I can put one clip or two clips to hold my paper on the sides. I would make a variety of papers to work with when you're outside. So if you have eight and a half by 11 copy paper, what you can do is take a piece and fold it in half. And then open it up and cut along your crease to make two smaller pieces of paper. Prepare these now while you're inside. And you could even take one of these pieces and fold it in half to make some smaller papers. So having some different sizes of papers before you go outside will be really helpful. And if you have different colors of papers, I have lots of different colors of plain papers that I can draw on you can take those out with you too.
We're back inside after drawing the shadows of the irises and something that Lucy Auger will do is if her shadow shapes are very big then she will color them in. She uses uh, an ink from Japan called Sumi ink and she uses a brush from China that's very soft and flexible. So if you wanted to make your shadow drawings on paper that could be painted, then that would be a great thing to do. But I have my dry color tools here and I'm going to use colored pencil and crayon to color in my shadow shapes. You see, Auger uses black to color in her shapes, so they look a lot like shadows but you don't have to do that. You can use any colors you want. I'm starting off by coloring gently with my colored pencil. And now what I'm going to do is take a different color and blend it in. With dry coloring tools, the harder you push down, the more solidly you cover the paper. And so by using a light, gentle pressure, it's a lot easier to mix the colors together. So I'm adding some magenta here at the very tips of my shadows. I'm not coloring to make my picture look like the real irises. So I'm not using greens or purples. I'm just coloring in to create a new kind of interest in my drawing. And I'm playing with the light and dark and the changing of the colors to add interest to my drawing. Because this space is so big, I'm taking my time and coloring across the space little by little. This is sometimes called ladder coloring. Switch back to that magenta. And do some down here. You have to be careful when you're coloring on the edge your tool wants to go off and then it catches on the thickness of the paper. I think for this part of the shadow, which I drew around the flower, I'm going to add a different color than magenta. I'm letting the orange gradually fade away into the red. Let's try a different coloring technique with the crayons. See how crayon looks. So the same idea, I'm coloring very gently so that I, if I want to add more of this color and make it thicker and heavier, or if I want to add a different color, there's still 
room on the paper to hold that color. I have it completely filled in the surface with the crayon. So here, instead of transitioning between colors, I'm changing colors completely. I'm going to add some darker colors, but I'm going to use them to highlight the outline, the edges, the contour of the shadow. I'm tracing the pencil line, and because the crayon is a bigger tool, I'm making a thicker outline. Sometimes your tool, the same color, won't go darker. So I will switch to a different green. So lots of possibilities to add color to your shadow drawing once you're back in the studio.
when I was outside making this shadow drawing, working with the crayons, I noticed that the texture of my choroplast board appeared on the paper. I was making a frottage like in my other video and I didn't even realize that was going to happen. So if your drawing board has a texture on it, you might want to actually work on a stack of papers, putting a few extra papers under your drawing paper will smooth out the surface and prevent frottage from happening. The other thing that I noticed was working in the sunlight, my crayons started to get a little bit softer. They didn't actually melt, but I could feel them going onto the paper a lot more smoothly and softly, almost like they were a marker. That was really neat. And I think some of the places where my colors mixed together, they actually mixed together a little bit better because they were slightly warm. But it did make me worry about leaving my unused crayons in the sunlight. So I would suggest that you put all of the things that you're not using in the shade and just keep the things that you're working on with you in the sun under the shadows. The shadows here were so delicate I decided to use colored pencil, which has a smaller point and so made a skinnier line than my crayons. I also had to stand and hold my paper close mm -hmm. to the plants so that I got the sharpest shadows and I didn't miss any of the details. And I thought it would be more interesting to turn my paper and get shadows from different sides of my paper as I was going along. I didn't do this, but I think it would also be interesting to use uh, different colors and draw shadows over other shadows. You know, each one of these drawings is in its own space on the paper, and there's plenty of room for more shadow drawings to appear, but wouldn't it be interesting to make shadow drawings that go over other ones, especially because this is such a delicate drawing to do. So this shadow is very, very fuzzy, but I want you to see the effect of a shadow drawing on top of another shadow drawing. I think that could be very interesting too. If you can't go outside, then you can bring your subject indoors. I found these dried plants by the side of the road and I broke one off to bring back into the studio with me. I want to have my hands free to do all of the drawing, so I taped my paper down onto the table and I've balanced the branch underneath a hanging flashlight. If you have a light that you can direct, then you can plug that in and have it shine down. And now with the branch balanced in place and my paper set, I can do the fun part, which is to trace around the shadow of the dried flowers and all of the branches and stems. If things move, you can just shift them back so that they line up with your previous lines again. This branch is very long and my hair was getting tangled in it at the back. And that time I bumped the branch.
The nice thing about working indoors is you don't have to worry about wind or temperature or bugs. And so you can more carefully plan your composition. That is, you can more carefully think about where you want the shadow drawings to be on your paper. Let's see how that looks. I also have some stems of flowers that I removed. So here I can control how big and how in focus the shadow is. I'm holding it in my hands and I can see almost every single fine edge of this flower. I think that looks pretty good. Friends, it's so easy to pack up your drawing tools and take your studio outside and make art from nature. So what are you waiting for? Go get a bucket, go get a bag, fill it up, head outside, and don't forget to wear your sunscreen. Have fun. I'll see you next time.